Hi students, so today we have somebody very special with us, Oishi, who is doing her anthropology honors under graduation from Hansraj College, Delhi University. She is uh, involved with the dramatic society of her college. She is also uh, involved very actively with uh, initiative of UN, which is called Girl Up. And Oishi is also involved in another initiative, which is called Beyond Meds. Oishi, welcome to Education View 360. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. So glad to help out people who are actually, you know, trying to get into this course because it is something very rare. So I'm glad that you're conducting this interview so that people can actually know about this. Thank you so much. Thank you. So Oishi, moving on to our first question, please tell our students that what is the eligibility criteria to take up this course at Delhi University? All right. So when we talk about eligibility and Delhi University, the first thing that comes to my mind is that you need to go through the cutoffs. You need to get marks wherein you can actually get into this college. So when I talk about anthropology and yeah, Delhi University, there is only one college the entire 90 or 99 colleges that Delhi University has, there's only one college uh, which provides you with this course and that is Hansraj College, right? And I think for the past two to three years, the cutoff has been same, which is 93%. All Great. right, when we talk about uh, when we talk about eligibility there's a lot for example you need to have your you need to have a uh, biology back as your background right you need to have physics chemistry and biology if you have maths it won't help you because anthropology is very biology subject centric so you need to have biology in your 12th standard that is one thing then you need to have the minimum cutoff that they ask for that's all you need to have and most important is the marks right you're very right and i believe the subject also because not everybody with any subject combination can apply for it right uh, yes, Urshi, would right. you talk about the curriculum semester wise what you've been doing in which semester all right. So, you know, when we enter the course, uh, we are basically taught the introduction to all the main subjects that we have. Now, when I talk about anthropology, there are two main aspects, okay, social anthropology and biological anthropology. Now, anthropology is a very clashing course wherein it talks about biology, but then it also talks about the societal effect on humans. Right. So when you go for your master's later on, no. So you have to choose whether you're going for social anthropology or biological anthropology. In bachelor's, it is a mixture of both and other subfields as well. So in the first and second semester is basically introduction to various subfields. We have an introduction to social anthropology. We have introduction to biological anthropology. We have introduction to archaeology also. So these three are the main subjects that we follow. And uh, along with these subjects, we also have practical. Right? Practicals uh, in terms of both social anthropology and biological anthropology. Now, in, if I talk about social anthropology, we have this concept of gene uh, genealogy. Okay, wherein we make a family tree and we see how with age, for example, my in my grandparents' time, women, how many women in the family were educated and married by what year? And when I talk about my generation, the number increases, right? Initially, when we, if I talk about my grandparents, the females there would get married by the age of 17 or 18. But when I talk about my generation, so we get married at 27, 28. So this is how socially uh, changes have come in generations. This is one of our practicals in first year. And then if I talk about uh, biological anthropology, there we study how to measure skull, how to measure nasal indexes. You know, we have different types of nose. What are the types of uh, noses that you have, different types of eyelids. All these things come under biological anthropology. Then uh, the second, second year, the cu curriculum in second year is very 
bit focused more into the concepts for example how uh, culture and society actually works now i'm talking about social anthropology how culture and society works how has it molded us as humans this is second year it gets more refined and in terms of biology we have genetics molecular biology right very you know when we talk about in 11th and 12th standard uh, 12th standard we talk about biology genetics we have evolution that is exactly what we have in second year as well now when we move to third year it's very uh, subject centric we have field works all right we go to museums and we go to archaeological sites and we see how the work is actually done because now you've entered the last stage now you need you've studied everything now you need to you need to know how to implement it so that is what the third year is about where you study about indigenous people and you know tribal people people pe peasants in india and the field work basically so there's that right thank you so much for very detailed uh, you know insights into the curriculum now moving on to as you mentioned about post graduation so that's going to be to be my next question what's the future road map and what sort of careers do the anthropology students take up after they finish their undergraduation see uh, if i'm if i were to talk about the scenario that i'm living in right now because in my course there are 60 people right now a lot of them have taken anthropology just because it is a very good prospect if you do anthropology it covers uh, social uh, aspects and biological aspects as well so people who are willing to appear for upsc exams they have legit taken anthropology so that they can have you know the legs in both the worlds because social anthropology ka bhi paper aata hai and then biological questions are also there in upsc and social anthropology helps you in the aptitude a lot so most of them you know out of 60 if i talk about 40 of them they have taken anthropology because it boosts their knowledge in terms of upsc exam so if you don't want to just prepare and you know have a degree in hand also anthropology is great because in other subjects you will have to focus there only if i talk about botany you get you, you know you have in depth knowledge of plants there you cannot concentrate on other aspects anthropology gives you an opportunity to do both and then again there's archaeology right uh, we have always heard of archaeology there's museums we can work in because when you work in a museum you not only need people who can actually tell you about stuff ki acha this is a, this is from you know uh, mesolithic era or paleolithic era no apart from that we also need experts who would study the artifacts so that is where anthropology kicks in that is where anthropologists are needed then uh, we have this uh, sub field known as kin anthropometry or kin anthropology now kin anthropology is uh, very i'm so sorry for the background kin anthropology is something used widely in terms of sports now kin anthropology is the study of weight height and body composition okay so you measure the body uh, weights your the fat uh, structure and you study you make a chart for example if i talk about sports we have criteria based on weight right why do we have that because a certain body type is asserted to a certain condition and we have to keep that in mind i cannot make a 16 year old or probably a 15 year old run a cross country race that cannot body will not permit that and the makers and the organizers have, organizers have to take care of that so that is why kin anthropology kicks in and uh, then we have forensic anthropology there's forensics but then there's forensic anthropology wherein you know you use the concept of anthropology osteology osteology is study of bones and uh, somato uh, somatometry these things in order to uh, you know solve homicides when at times cases that 
that are very old you you can you actually need experts to figure out the structure of the skull and you know the dental uh, imprints in order to get hold of the uh, criminal so that is where forensic anthropology kicks in now these were uh, some of the very non mainstream uh, categories that i've mentioned apart from that once you've done bachelor's in anthropology if you're going for masters there's n number of prospects that you can work on you can go to linguists linguistics right language there's also this thing called fashion anthropology you know when we go for uh, shopping there are pre defined sizes right ki s hai m hai xl hai who is deciding these sizes anthropologists are setting these sizes this study they conduct survey of body types uh if you've been to h&m like a lot of people would have been to so they have different sizes for example europe 36 america 28 why because anthropologists have conducted study that in this area this particular region this particular region people have this body type and the normalized or standard size is this this is how the sizes that we have come into play that is fashion anthropology right uh, oishi last question for you though i had not planned this question but then since you mentioned internship i thought i must ask for the benefit of students so what sort of internship do the anthropology students sign up for see uh, since i am in my second year i have done my fair share of research now we are not provided anything of sorts from our colleges and especially being an anthropology student and getting an uh, an internship is not the very basic three procedures that you go from go from or through when you're a commerce student first is basically you sign up or you fill a form then you know there's a group discussion and there's a personal interview that is how normal internship work but in anthropology it is very or you know your atmosphere based for example uh if you want to work in the national museum right in terms of internships i think the best thing is you can apply for it in the national museum it can be anywhere delhi kolkata bangalore anywhere so therein the only procedure is that you need to have a letter of recommendation from one of your professors i mean if you have a good rapport with your professors it's very easy to get internships and that in great places for example if i talk about uh, you know the ministry of tourism there also so it's not very mainstream of commercial fairs you're not going to go in and going to get internship in commercial fairs but then rather than very all the government organization that's all i'm saying when i talk about internship in terms of anthropology keeping anthropology in mind you know the tourism or ministry of uh, the you know archaeology and ministry of various ministries when it from you know the public and health ministry these are the spheres where you can score an internship but again it the only required requirement is a letter of recommendation probably an interview which is followed by a period of fa that's all all right so thank you so much oishi for all your insights and i am sure it's going to help a lot of students thanks for your time once more